All right. Um, so um, it's one minute past 10. So and then I'm from Germany, as I said, so we are very time conscious, obviously. So um, so we start right away. And I don't want to waste your time with this. So I hope to make this interactive. Um, I hope you had a chance to um, prepare a little bit. Um, and this is really just for helping you for your poster session. Um, but definitely will this be what we talk about for the next hour or so and be um, valuable for, um, for the rest of your life, uh, to be honest, um, as, as most of the things we teach you at university, but like this one in particular, because this has uh, to do about what pictures and other digital resources you can use in presentations, in videos, in other blogs, in other stuff you create. Uh, um digitally or analog um and this is a, a 2020 skill to have i think um a lot of teachers don't know this a lot of students don't know this you might be uh, knowing a lot about this so, and this is why i would like to find out a little bit more about what you know and what you don't know so i'd like to start um with uh, with a short mentimeter questions i put the link into the chat you can also participate uh, in um uh, with your mobile phone if you put it um if you take it out um so uh, here comes the link in the chat and uh, i share my screen as well um would be awesome if you could just answer this this question and you can move forward to the other questions You can also go to menti.com with your mobile phone and enter the code 65096077. 11 of you are there already. Um, we are 15 here, so I might wait another more session. So, so not familiar. Everyone maybe has heard about it or do you want to comment? Um, we can interact as much as we want as you want to really i'm i'm keen to just unmute your microphone if you want to say something or comment something or write in the chat i keep an eye on the chat as well um and i haven't really said much about myself to start with um, um i'll do this in a second but um do you want to comment anything like how familiar you are when you say a 2.5 uh, on sites like Unsplash? Have you heard them before? Have you used them? Anyone? Uh, I have heard about them, but I didn't use them, to be honest. No. Until then. And Creative Commons licenses? Uh, same. <laughs> yeah. And that's... I guess that's the same for everyone here in the room or yeah. Yeah. For most of you, at least. Um, very few are extremely familiar with it, at least. Um, so that's good. Uh, that means um, this session um, is not uh, like is not old knowledge to you, at least. Um, so we're moving on. Um, please write the following statements. I usually copy and paste pictures from the Internet, okay. Um, I strongly disagree. Um, you don't use pictures, or how do you make use of pictures? You take your own, um, then. Um, Seldom use pictures at all. Actually. For for PowerPoint presentations and all that, you never use pictures. No, sometimes absolutely, but it's not often. Okay. Anyone else wants to share how you use pictures for um, presentations? 
I'm asking because in, in usually uh, when you hear also talks about uh, presentation techniques pre and presentation skills, made 90 um 90 um percent probably of the talks say that you should use a lot of pictures um on slides um i get some um, comments here and yeah you can chat also privately to me you're most welcome if you want to just share with me pixabay usually yeah great and uh, very few of you use um Creative uh, Commons license material. That's that's great. Then you will be learning something new here. And did, uh, thanks for your honesty. Uh, did not read the page at all. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, just skim through the page. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Read the entire page. Well, well done. Um, well done of you who um, read the entire page and watched both the videos. Um, so uh, great. Great. Okay. And uh, hopefully um, you will not only listen, but also interact a little bit with me and then everything will be much more fun during the next hour. And you just start doing this already since that much about Creative Commons. Yep. Yep. Exact. Excellent. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much. And uh, then this session has uh, is of use and will be of use um, uh, because this is what we exactly going to talk about, how you can find pictures for your posters. And I will demonstrate a way um, how you find uh, and can reuse Creative Commons licensed pictures. And I tell you, explain you what that is and uh, why it's useful. And um, and then demonstrate a workflow um, how you quickly get this into your PowerPoint presentations or SlideShare or whatever you use. Just if you write quickly in your chat, everyone, what do you use for making presentations? Which tool do you use? PowerPoint, Prezi, uh, Google Slides, or if you can just quickly write in the chat. Yeah, and you, yeah. Perfect, uh, you can either share it to me privately or to everyone. PowerPoint, you know how to make those changes, right? Chatting to myself privately or to everyone. Um, if not, uh, ask me. Um, uh, great, PowerPoint. I will demonstrate that's in PowerPoint and if, as most of you use PowerPoint. Um, so, um, why is this, uh, why are we talking about pictures? in the first place. Um, if you do a poster, very hands-on uh, utilitarian, like uh, in your task, it's it's good to have some, uh, to make your poster more visually attractive. <laughs> Same with your slides. If you do a, a, a PowerPoint presentations, just having, you know, you have seen plenty of presentations from teachers who have only have text on, your, on their slides, right? And how boring that is and how hard this is for you to keep on uh, focusing on what the teacher says then. And you can, and this is why uh, we should not put uh, teach, uh, posters on our um, uh, texts on our PowerPoint slides so much. We should you, you work with pictures. And um, this is what I'm, we're trying to um, tell our colleagues and um, um, not everyone is following that part uh, according to this, unfortunately. So on the other hand, uh, you want to have a lot of uh, slides, of course, to study with as a, as a kind of compendium and on top of the um, research articles, for instance. So there is a, there is a useful uh, way of having this kind of slides with a lot of text on, but not when you stand in front of a, a group of people and trying to be convincing then you should work with pictures and little text. So then the question comes up, where do you find pictures, right? And which one are you allowed to use? Because what are we doing when we just copy, most like what are we doing most likely um, when we just take copy a uh, pictures from the internet? Anyone knows?
what are we most likely doing when we're just copying and pasting pictures from the internet? Yeah, breaking rules exactly, and in particular, exactly um, breaking copyright rules. You're breaking the copyright law. Because uh, whenever I put the picture out or my slides out there, um, and um, I have as a as a creator of something copyright. I don't need to register this at all. I just buy the copyright law is whenever you create something and you put it out there, it you are the copyright owner. And what do we need to do if we want to reuse something, someone's work? Do you know that? You remember that from the movies you watched? If you want to reuse a picture you find on the internet, what do you need to do in order not to break copyright rules? Exactly, you need to ask for permission, right? So, um, but we don't do this. Or do you, have you ev ever asked someone if you could reuse someone's work? No, most of us don't do this. I haven't, I, in the past, I haven't done this either. But uh, I, in, now that I understand uh, how easy it is used to not break copyright laws, I usually do this um, because I use pictures, Creative Commons license pictures, or from sites which, are allowed, uh, which I'm allowed to do. So this is what we have to do usually. We have to ask for, uh, or we have to, we have to ask for permission. Um, otherwise, we're breaching copyright uh, rules. So, um, and I have some slides here, um, and you, I'll put them on, on Canvas later, so you will have them. Um, so this is what this is all about um, the next hour or so. Uh, where can we find them and, um, and how are we going uh, about? So the, the short answer, as I had on the page, uh, where can I find pictures which I can reuse is on, um, is on um, uh, these uh, pages, for instance, which you have linked on, on Canvas, um, Unsplash or Pixabay. Um, this is, um, you can check them out for yourself. You find lots of uh, beautiful pictures there. Uh, and on those, uh, the license terms on, on those uh, sites and there's others, um, other um, pages like this, is that um, people will upload their pictures. They uh, um, said beforehand, you can reuse my pictures. If I upload my pictures there, then it's, um, then the, picture copyright holders of the picture said it's okay for everyone else to reuse my pictures all right so on pictures on those uh, sites you don't even have to um you can just do basically whatever you want with them you can download them you can change them um it would be nice and as it's high quality pictures on unsplash for instance um to give credit but you don't even have to give credit or refer to them or attribute um uh, the authors uh, or the copyright holders of those pictures. All right, so that's the short answer. If you if that's you find roughly round about 1.82 million pictures there, um, that's perfect, right? So um, um, the problem is though. Um, for instance, if you make um, and we can we can check it out um, as well. Um, I stop uh, sharing this. Um, I can just show you how this looks like. Um, I share my screen, different screen here. Maybe I should just share my entire screen for later as well. Then I can reuse this. Um, if we go to Unsplash, for instance. Um, yeah, maybe you have checked out by those by now and all those pictures. You can find like high quality pictures, and they make it very easy for you. Uh, if you click on one and want to download it, um, to give, for instance, credit for for someone, um, so then you can just download the picture and you get it also um, um, a line here uh, where you can uh, make give credit to uh, to in this case Matilde here. So that's nice to do. But let's say you want to do a presentation, Xava, you go home and make a presentation about Karlstadt or um, you other guys uh, later want to make a presentation about Karlstadt. And then you go there here and um, 
on Unsplash and you find some pictures, surprisingly, um, you do find pictures about Karlstadt. Um, but if you, uh, on Pixabay as well, we can check out Pixabay as well. Um, Yeah, you find also some. These ones up here, for instance, they are. This is um, um, sponsored images, so this is um, advertising. So um, you have to be careful with those. But here are the uh, pictures from Pixabay. So there you have some other. Um, but unless you want to talk about those places, um, um, you're limited to very few pictures. So what's the longer answer then? The longer answer is that you want to find Creative Commons license pictures, right? Um, and what is Creative Commons license uh, pictures? Uh, that is a turning around uh, on what is Creative Commons licenses is is a system um, where you uh, where we turn around uh, the process of asking and giving permission, right? little bit similar to um, um, Pixabay and Unsplash, where we say like the, the people who uploaded their pictures, they are said beforehand that it's okay for them that others download the pictures. Um, Creative Commons has um, created a legal framework, like uh, which is um, holds up in court, uh, which is um, machine readable. Um, so you can search for it on the internet and uh, which is very um, easily to understood, a license system where you people who upload their pictures say beforehand that others can reuse the pictures, okay? So in other terms, if I make a picture or something in my teaching, for instance, a slide share, or a slide deck or a great pictures, which I, I, I want my work to re be reused by others, but I don't want people to ask me for permission. Then I can upload my work somewhere and include a Creative Commons license. And everyone who knows what this license means, they know exactly what they're allowed to do and allowed not to do and which terms apply. Does that make sense so far at all? Some nodding, yeah, yeah. Please, if, if, uh, if, if you want me to go faster, slower, or repeat something, just um, uh, uh, like get in, make yourself heard in the chat or somewhere else. Um, so so this, is, um, this is what Creative Commons licenses are about. And I uh, go back to my, uh, you see my slides, right? Yeah. Um, so, so just to re repeat a little bit, we can share greatly on the internet, right? We do this all the time, um, but copyright uh, laws prohibit it, really. The, um, so the internet enables us to do great stuff, to share something, but copyright law impedes this, right? Uh, what to do? The answer is Creative Commons licenses. Um, and it builds uh, Creative Commons licenses built on copyright law to encourage sharing. So, and then we have a situation like this. We can uh, have a great, uh, we have the great internet that we have, which brings us together uh, and makes sharing so easy. Um, and Creative Commons licenses gives us a legal framework and to make uh, use of all the technical possibilities. So if you find something which is uh, licensed by a Creative Commons with a Creative Commons license, then, and this is the first free, uh, the freest license, CC BY, and I'll explain you in a second where to find them and uh, how, what to make with them. Um, you can do basically everything. The copyright holder told you beforehand, in this case, Sada Mertzel, a colleague, uh, um, at, um, at another, another university who made this page here, told us beforehand, you, we can do basically everything with this picture. We can make a copy, we can dist redistribute this picture on our blog, in our PowerPoint presentations, we can cut it in half or only use it apart. We can, as that is revising. We can uh, remixing it with other um, um, pictures and we can, 
basically do whatever. And we only have one condition. We, own, we have to give credit to Zara Mertzel. We have to give credit to the copyright owner. All right. And this one is uh, this CC BY. And have you seen, if you write in the chat quickly, have you seen those logos before? Before this lecture? Yes. No, some did and some did not. Uh, you will, um, and I will show you and make yourself point to you where you can see them um, in a second. So this is the different licenses. This one was the first one. This is the most freest. You can do whatever with them. And, and then there's five others. And, um, but they are only combinations of three of them really. <clears throat> and this is share alike. Anyone has an idea what that means? No. Um, share alike means if I reuse um, a picture with this license and I remix something, I do something new, then I have to uh, up and share my work, then I have to use the same Creative Commons license for my new work, which I build on someone else's work with this license. Okay. So if I make um, remix um, a work, like take several different pictures and create a new um, picture out of this. And one of the uh, pictures is licensed with this license, CC by share alike. Then I have to uh, publish my um, uh, work with this license. This was share alike. The, the third one here is NC and that means non-commercial. In this one, if, if I find a picture with CC BY, for instance, I can print a copy and sell this copy. Okay, the copyright holder um, uh, told me that I could, I am allowed to do this. I can use this, I'm a consultant also partly, um, if I find a picture with CC BY, I can use this in my commercial entity, um, in my commercial projects. If I find a picture with CC by NC non-commercial, then I'm not allowed to use this in a commercial context. So here at university, I can do this because university um, education in Sweden is for free. It's a public um, good, it's not made for profit, then I can use uh, NC pictures. But in, in if you work later in a private company, then you're not allowed to use uh, NC um, material. All right. And then there's the combination of the two. And then you have a third one, ND, no derivatives. That you, means that you, if you find a picture like this, um, you can re, uh, reuse it in your blog, you can use it in your PowerPoint presentation, but you cannot uh, make changes to that picture. You cannot cut it in half or change the colors or make a sepia picture out of this. You have to use it as it is. And then you have the combination of non-commercial and non derivatives. And that's it. That's the six different types. Any questions so far? Is it all crystal clear? Or is it too complex? You have some feedback? Crystal clear so far, I get here. Good, then I continue. Uh, and is you, uh, good, uh, thank you for the feedback. Um, as I said, if there's something you don't understand, just let me know. So there's uh, two more, uh, which I haven't uh, said, which are on this picture, that's public domain. Um, and there's two versions of it. Do you know what um, public domain is? What the public domain is? If you write this in the chat or um, no, 
at least one of you know. Okay, thank you. Um, public domain is, okay, starting there. How, do you know uh, copyright? Uh, how long do you have if you create something? Um, for instance, uh, LSU you create a picture and put it, uh, you just have it and you put it out there, your picture on um, Flickr, for instance. How long do you have copyright? And everyone else can also answer. How long does Alice have a copyright on her picture, which she produced? It was probably probably in the video, but you probably don't remember. How long do you have copyright on your creative works? Hmm. No one. Uh, you have your copyright and uh, longer than uh, oh uh, now I'm 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 sure Christian help me out how long do you have uh, patents? I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. You don't know either. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think in Germany it's it's seventy years or something like that. Seventy years from which point? Let me remember that again um, until something is like I'm going to public. No, but maybe uh, that's right. 70 years is right in most of the countries. Uh, in most of the countries is 70 years after the death of the copyright holder. Oh. Okay, sorry. So um, if I take this on myself because I'm talking about me dying now, uh, so then it's more uh, nicer than any one of you. And so if I make uh, this work I created here and it's out there on the internet, I'm the copyright holder uh, for my uh, teaching material, for instance, if I put it out there, I retain copyright or my children have the copyright then 70 years after I pass away. Right? So extremely long. Hopefully, hopefully for more than 100 years in my case now. Um, so um, extremely long copyright laws. And that's mainly because lobbying work of uh, uh, Walt Disney and other copyright holders who make a lot of money on this, uh, uh, um, frankly. So, so what happens then after those 70 years? Would could be a good question to ask yourself. And then there's some chats, uh, comments in the chats. Yeah, okay. Um, that was the old question. Um, that is, um, so after the 70 years, uh, the works go into the public domain. Then there, no one has the copyright. No one, there is no copyright owner to this work then. All right. Um, and this happens automatically that uh, works go into the public domain and I'm coming back to my slides, you know. So, um, uh, so after the 70 years and uh, in some other year, countries, it might be other um, time period, the, the works are in the public domain. Then. And then no one has the copyright, so everyone can does, do with it uh, what uh, they want to do with it. Um, but there's also another way how you uh, works can end up in the public domain. Um, I can refrain from my uh, copyright um, right as well, from my copyright as well. I can say like, I put my stuff out there, I want it to be in the public domain. Then I can do this by using uh, this uh, license and put attach um, this to my work. Um, those two um, are in, um, on top of the other license types from Creative Commons licenses, all right? And this chart tells you if you want to remix work with each other in a remix, not in a, a compilation, um, how you can remix stuff. For instance, if you have a license um, non-derivatives, uh, you cannot remix it with any uh, license because you cannot remix this work. You can only use this work as is, right? That's non-derivative stuff, so you I cannot do a remix. Um, but if I have a, res uh, a public domain work here, I can remix this um, with uh, most of the licenses, not with the ND ones. Um, I cannot uh, um, 
use um, a public domain work with share alike because um, I cannot uh, change the um, public domain um, work um, uh, of this new compilation uh, uh, with the non-derivatives ones. Uh, I can uh, share my work um, um, uh, with the public domain uh, work, my new compilation, sorry. Now I'm uh, getting confused a little bit myself here with all the different uh, arrows and um, crosses, but this shows you if you create something new, a remix, a kind of a smoothie uh, of uh, several pictures, what you can remix. Um, now it's a little bit uh, doing a PowerPoint slide and showing several pictures is not a remix. So in my work, when I do a PowerPoint slide with different pictures, I can use all of them because this is not a remix. This is, um, this is an important distinction. And I don't know if that makes any sense, but um, as I don't hear from you, um, I take this that you can follow me. So, um, so like the you can a different charge what you're allowed to do just showing from that the, like the CC by um, a several no uh, that says a good question several pictures on a poster is not a remix okay this is a compilation very good question um, and from very free to less free um, all right so that's the ones I uh, showed you. And here's some uh, ways now, now I want to show you where to find pictures like this. Okay, and that you've seen those before already. Um, for instance, um, I show you one page, which I will need work use in my demonstration later. Um, Flickr, Flickr has like, um, millions of pictures. It's a picture database. And if we find search here, we stay with our example that we want to do a, a, a kick-ass presentation about Karlstadt, you find 28,000 pictures which are tagged with Karlstadt. Pretty a lot of them. But here we have um, now pictures with a Creative Commons license and without a Creative Commons license. So now we want to filter those. So, and here in Flickr, you have a filter button, says any licenses, and now we show uh, um, all rights reserved and uh, Creative Commons license pictures. So now you can say, show me all the Creative Commons license pictures only. And then you have less obviously, because you're filtering out um, a lot of pictures, but you still have 2,300 pictures co uh, tagged with Creative Commons licenses, okay? And all those pictures, the copyright holders of those pictures uploaded those pictures here with the Creative Commons license and telling you that you are allowed to reuse those pictures under certain limitations. Okay. And I'll show you how this looks like. We will, um, I'll go to this one. I'm a public transport researcher. So maybe I want to show some buses in motion here and here. Do you see those logos? Do you recognize them? Those are the Creative Commons licenses. And this link here is a link to the Chrome Creative Commons license page. Here you see, can you, from the logos, um, can you see which license of those six was this? Can you write this in the chat? Just to see if you, <laughs> which were the six licenses again? And uh, which one is this? What could this uh, dollar sign mean? NC, exactly, non-commercial. And what this one, the equal sign, what does this mean? Can I make changes to those pictures? No, exactly. So, and you see this exactly, CC by attribution. That means this, uh, I always, attribution means referring. I also always have to say in all Creative Commons licenses that who was the copyright holder, non-commercial, no derivatives. And here it says, you are free to share, copy, redistribute the material in any medium or format. 
So you can make a poster, print it out, um, make a PowerPoint presentation, use it in your uh, in a, a YouTube video you produce. That's fine. But under the following terms, you have to give credit to, um, in this case, Trollhare. And you cannot use it in a commercial context and you cannot make derivatives. All right? Still crystal clear? Good. So, uh, this was one place where you can find uh, pictures on Flickr, for instance, very easily find Creative Commons license pictures. But uh, uh, there's even better way to find Creative Commons license pictures. I assume you use Google sometimes. Um, and if we search here for Karlstadt also, and under the picture search, Sava so Bilder, you understand, um, it's the same in German, and uh, you have uh, some tools here. Werktuk, tools, Werkzeug, Xaver, you understand, you get a free um, uh, Swedish lesson here as well. Um, Thanks. And there it says Anwendungsrettigheter. Xava, this means uh, usage terms. And here you have a button, Creative Commons licenses. All right. So now you can filter all those uh, millions of pictures, or thousands probably, uh, by, again, as we did in Flickr. Now you find pictures here which are published with Creative Commons licenses. And I take a picture here, here, beautiful uh, picture of KCCC. Um, and uh, we go to this, this leads us back to Flickr then, right? And um, you will see it says some rights reserved and another test, which license is this in the chat? Quick, who is first? NC and what was the other? Exactly, NC share alike. We can double check, go to this page. Here it says attribution, non-commercial share alike. And what that means is you are free to make copies, redistribute in the material in any medium or format and remix, transform, build upon the material. Under the following terms, you have to attribute as always and non-commercial context. And if you remix, um, and this really remix uh, means that you make a, um, um, that you not as in a poster and as in a PowerPoint uh, slide where you just show this picture that is uh, um, not meant here. Then you have to use to publish your work with the same license and see share alike. All right. So, and the thing is here, Oh, I, uh, wait a second. I show you a third way uh, where you can find uh, a great um, way you can filter even the uh, even better um, in the first place. Creative Commons license pictures. This is searchcreativecommons.org. Um, you have to. I put the slides, uh, the link here in the chat also for you guys. Um, You have the link there. Um, if you search here for Karlstad, you can immediately filter the results here. If you use it commercially, um, then you can filter this. Um, so then you know, for instance, you can use all of those pictures here in a commercial context. So if you have a company, you can, you're allowed to use those pictures for your company. You just have to give credit to the uh, um, copyright holder. And, and why I think this is so uh, amazing is because you find uh, more now than 500 million pictures, which are Creative Commons licensed. And if you use those pictures, you can feel confident and you can be confident that you're not breaking copyright laws. So this enables you to create uh, and do amazing creative work and produce something digitally 
in different contexts, on blogs, on other home pages, in videos, in poster presentations, in all kinds of settings, in commercial settings and in non-commercial settings. And, but you have to understand uh, how basically what we talked about now about the Creative Commons licenses. And this enables you to do amazing stuff. You, are you a little bit convinced? Was this helpful so far? So, um, and once you understood this now and use this, yeah, you can, you can use this for always, really. Um, this is a legal framework. This is nothing um, which will change uh, very soon. Um, it builds on international copyright law. It's been tested in court, um, people reusing. If you're following the basic rules here, um, nothing will ever happen to you. If you made a, a mistake with a commercial or non-commercial context uh, and the copyright holder uh, contacts you and say, uh, you, you're breaching the copyright rules here, then uh, th the only thing which can happen is that they, um, that you stop, uh, can ask you to stop using this material. And then once you do, nothing will happen. Uh, cool. A, quick, a question regarding public domain. Disney still has copyright, but sooner or later this will expire. What do you think? Yeah, yeah well, the, the, it's not a question what I think about. What, um, it's, what will happen is as soon as copyright, after those 70 years, works will go into the public domain. And that happened with a, a lot of material already. So there is a lot of work. This is why you can choose to also to search for public domain work. There's a lot of stuff already in the public domain. A lot of museums um, uh, release a lot of their works in the public domain. So there's plenty of stuff uh, in the public domain. I don't think um, and that the, the, the time period will be extended even more because uh, there's a lot of um, legal lobbying going on and like people, more and more people have understand this now that there's been so much lobbying going on of copyright holders, large copyright holders that they, it will most likely not be extended. But there are of course sometimes uh, copyright uh, laws reforms where yeah, different stakeholders <laughs> try to negotiate and influence pub, um, polit uh, po politics, uh, politicians and policymakers. So, um, and this is something which we usually, when we hear copyright law, most of us, including myself, we phase out because we think it's too complicated and it's boring, but it affects our daily lives, of course. And uh, now you have a little bit better understanding what this is all about. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I got a question here. How do I find images that are in the public domain? Uh, I go back to um, sharing my screen and show you uh, because it's right here. Um, you just um, filter, for instance, uh, by public domain. Both of those are in public domain. So now you have um, 416 images in the public domain. Yeah, so you go to searchcreativecommons.org. So as you see, most of the stuff, old pictures, usually taken from, um, from public organizations or um, from, yeah, old pictures from private people, from museums. Yep. Um, all clear so far? Now, uh, after the break, I would like to show you, um, uh, demonstrate you a quick workflow, how to quickly uh, move a picture which you find into PowerPoint. All right. So once you did this, it will go into seconds that you have um, um, copy and paste the picture which you're allowed to use in your PowerPoint presentation and that you have this uh, by uh, the um, referencing. I, I'll just show you this quickly. Um, also, what, wait a second. Uh, what I mean, uh, I, uh, where's my slide? Um, now you see my PowerPoint slide again, right? Um, 
So I quickly show you. Um, so so this is what you have to do here. Um, this is how we refer to uh, where are your faces here. This is how um, you have to, uh, which is um, attribution or referring to uh, what we do in scientific articles looks like in in um, in creative for Creative Commons licenses. Um, and this you have to either put underneath the picture or at the end of your presentation. You can you don't you can choose for yourself. I usually do it immediately at with the at the picture because I think it's giving more more credit to the to the author, and I want people to have credit for their work. Um, and you, as you see, maybe this 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 little text doesn't doesn't interfere much right um or i don't know i ask you like it's i i hope it's not interfering much you get the drift of my slides here anyway and i show you um quickly move to this picture so what it is here it's uh, it's there's an acronym called tessel it means title author source and license all right this is also always what you have to do to give uh, um to refer to the um pictures or to any material. The title of the work, and this is The Art of Social Media by the by MKH Marketing author and the license link. And you have to link to the sources. As this is digital uh, media, I, this all those three are links to the title, uh, to the work and to the author and to the license type. Um, if you use it on your, if you would have done now posters in, in print out posters in an analog form, you would have, instead of just digitally linking to it, which you cannot do, write out the link, right? The URL, right? On, on, a, on printouts, on analog. Uh, so you have just have to, you just have to make an effort that other people can find the original, that it's clear who is the author, the copyright holder, and which license it is. That has to be clear. It's very, very rather easy. And what I would like to show you after the break is how to get a copy and pasting a picture and having this credit line here done in seconds. Okay, it's a three, four copy and paste clicks. And uh, once you practice this, you have pictures like this uh, included in your PowerPoint presentations in, in, a, in seconds. All right, and then you do kick as PowerPoint presentations in minutes. Does that sound okay? Yeah, what you need to do is to have bookmarks uh, of those links which I sent to you. So um, the bookmark of the Flickr CC attribution helper, for the cost of one way I show you, I show you two ways really. The one way you need to have, it only works for Flickr and only works with this attribution helper and the HTML viewer. If you have not done this yet, prepared this, um, then I like you to use the break apart from a technical break and caffeine, getting coffee or whatever you need to do, also to, um, get this into place. And now I'm sharing all this stuff. Um, and you have the links here in, in the course uh, on this page. Oh. Um, here at the bottom, those two links. And if you're unsure to how to get those into your bookmark toolbar, here should be links according to what browser you're using, how to do this. All right. That's what I would like you to do during the break if you have not done this. Um, otherwise, if you have done this and you have prepared, then you have a longer break now. Um, is 50 minutes good enough? Yeah. Then I, it's, let's say, and uh, we meet again at five, five past 11 after the short break. And I demonstrate you and show you how to do this quickly then into copying, pasting those pictures into um, PowerPoint. All right, great.
Thanks so far. I'll see you back in a second. Five past 11. So welcome back and um, did all of you, can you just quickly say in the chat, did, did you manage to put this in the toolbar, bookmark toolbar? Yes, some of you at least. Great, excellent. I'll demonstrate this quickly for all of you who watch the recording so that everyone is on the same page. Um, so once you go to this uh, CockDoc uh, Flickr CC helper, you choose how large you want to have those pictures later to be copied and which version uh, you want to uh, have, uh, which uh, variation of the attribution you want to have. For explanations here, you have uh, the docs, um, the uh, explanations here, and there you actually see the code which you, which you drag up here then uh, in the toolbar folder. That's all you do, basically. And this you need uh, as preparation uh, later. Okay, so um, I have, um, I start the demonstration now. Um, uh, so I have a, a clean PowerPoint presentation here, nothing in there. And I'm, we're still in this example that we wanna do a kick-ass presentation about Karlstad. So um, we, <laughs> you cannot see my screen. Uh, you, how is this? What did I share? Uh, I did not share. Um, sorry, and thank you for letting me know. Thanks. Um, so uh, once more quickly here, the uh, CockDoc helper, um, here the explanation, the docs, and um, what you do here is you make some settings here, which I explained here. Uh, you drop, drag it up here to your toolbar folder. All right, thank you. So now it's also on screen recorded. Um, um, sorry about that. Uh, so uh, going back to my uh, clean PowerPoint presentation here, just demonstrating this again, a clean PowerPoint presentation. And um, going back to this picture, which you remember maybe from uh, before the break. And you see here, and this only works now with Creative Commons license pictures. So whenever you're on, on Flickr, on a, a Creative Commons license uh, picture, you quick, clickly, um, you just click on this attribution helper, which you dragged up into the pool, toolbar. So you, a pop-up window will come up and you will can can copy here the attribution with image. This is what we're gonna copy now. And we're going to this HTML viewer, which we paste in here and we run this. And then we have the picture and uh, this byline here from Ulf Bedin. I copy everything. I say, uh, I copy, um, no, not copy image. I want to copy everything. So then I go into my PowerPoint presentation and then I paste everything and voila, I have, um, now it's both selected. So we wanna make sure you see the text here, which is uh, sometimes a little bit messy in here. So you need to take something away maybe. So then you have the text and, uh, and the text might be behind the picture, you know, different layers, right? Um, the text might be behind the picture um, so I send it back and so the text appears, then I made something uh, in uh, PowerPoint uh, which you can change the colors of links and I change the text of link, the color of my links and within seconds I have a kick-ass PowerPoint slide uh, for a great presentation which I can legally use and share um, in a non-commercial setting here and say like, look, I had a great time in Karlstadt and do a kick-ass presentation within seconds, okay? And this is how you can and should probably work with PowerPoint presentations, no text, just pictures, and then be the center um, and talk to your audience and convince them when you talk to them. Um, so you have this as recorded now. So um, if you have questions, we can deal with them right away. Um, I'm a busy person. So you will um, have a chance now to ask me questions. I'll show you now a second variant. Um, 
otherwise it, I'm a little bit hard to get track of. So um, I'm just saying like uh, use, use your time with me wisely if you have questions. Otherwise I just demonstrate you another way. Um, I make a new picture. So another great resource we talked about here was the C search creative commons search, right? Where we can find also publicly domain um, pictures. So I found this great picture. If you want to talk, uh, you can go, um, let's say the presentation, I also want to talk about the university, not only the uh, great parties you had, um, but you also want to say, show a little bit picture of the university where you also spend some time then. Um, then you have the, you have this here already readily made. Um, you copy everything, you go back to your PowerPoint presentations. It's really super easy. And uh, there you have this byline. Um, and then you go back uh, to your uh, to the picture. Um, you copy the image with the right mouse click, go to your PowerPoint presentations and um, send it back here uh, the barcode so the text is make this picture big and maybe this uh, should be a little bit more on top and then this should be a little bit smaller we don't want to ruin the entire picture make it white and now you have a uh, think of your presentation. We started, you have, look, when I was in Karlstadt, Karlstadt is a great place. So the sun is always shining. You can have great drinks at the water. And then they have a kick as university as well with some fancy buildings. So thank you very much. Come to Karlstadt and uh, learn more about presentation skills and Creative Commons licenses. So do you see how easy this is to make great pictures and presentations where you can feel um, um, confident that you're not breaking copyright laws. And the good thing is it's not only available for people don't only use those licenses for pictures, they use it for music, videos, research articles, all kinds of stuff. So there's millions of work out there on the internet, which you can easily filter and search for and reuse it in your own stuff. And now you are enabled and can feel confident to really create stuff. So, um, yeah, uh, now I feel almost, um, I, I'd, I'd like you to try this really uh, right now, then if you want to, then I can hang around for another five, 10 minutes and we can discuss something. So you can just test it. And if you run into problems, I can help you. Or we call it a day uh, and, uh, and you go back to your posters, research articles and all the other work you have to do. It's really up to you. So um, just one more thing I want to show you. It's a little bit off topic maybe, but I go back to share my screen, but where you can really use this in combination with creating good, great stuff. And I'm not sure if you, if you are aware of this, of your possibilities. Um, we have this great resource here in Karlstadt University, not many universities have this, um, where you can <clears throat> create your own WordPress blog and can be an administrator on your WordPress blog, where you can uh, apply this stuff. Uh, a lot of uh, teachers use this for their students, for, this, for the students to write reflective blog posts. But a lot of students use this also, not only for writing reflective reflections on their learning, but for making maybe a portfolio of their work, for instance. Um, WordPress is also awesome because 30% of all internet pages are uh, run by WordPress. WordPress is a blogging tool. Um, you can go to wordpress.com and create an account there and get a free web page, but then your data is with WordPress and uh, uh, you are kind of uh, in the, you are the product a little bit because they will track you and all you do as Google and the others do. But uh, when you, you go to sula.coward.se and I put the link also in the chat to all of you, you um, can create a WordPress site um, which is hosted 
on cards at universities. We don't track you, we don't sell your data, and we will not use it uh, against you to sell advertising. So um, you just quickly, if you want to create a blog and um, create digitally there, you go to create my site, you log in with your um, with your cow um, ID, and then you um, basically um, say what this um, what your uh, page should be look uh, called like we made one here which is called uh, uh, for a workshop this is here one uh, site name and you can call it uh, and create it um, as you want to um, it's very easy it's done in seconds and then you are the administrator of your blog and so this is a little bit um, um oh i did not share my screen did i did i so you did see this um stop sharing now yeah uh yeah uh, this is really all i wanted to show you and demonstrate you and um as i say um a good thing usually when i do this workshop uh, in the classroom um you have would have your computer in front of you and you would uh, do it um search pictures and try to integrate them into powerpoint i would suggest you that you do this as well now but um but you maybe want to do other stuff i, I don't care to be honest uh, how you want to do it so it's really up to you now we had some time to think about it so what how shall we proceed? Do you want to test it now or do you want to test it by yourself uh, without me? Uh, Christian, you're muted. So I am I saw that you were saying something, but... Uh, I can test it without. It's okay. I, I test it myself. It's so yeah. cool. Yeah. And you can always get in touch with me also if you want to. Um, uh, in, here's my email address in the chat. Uh, you can also find me on Twitter if you want to. Um, but um, I do get a lot of mails uh, through my work and I cannot always prioritize this. But I, if you ever have questions about Creative Commons licenses, do get in touch with me. I think this is so important. And, um, um, and go out there and tell your... Um, Classmates also about this. Everyone should know this. Far too few people know about this. And unfortunately, far too many breach copyright rules uh, without a need. I have a colleague who paid 30,000 Swedish crowns and um, because he did a presentation and copy and pasted a picture. And he was unfortunate that the copyright holder was sitting in the audience. So um, don't be like my colleague. You can now um, you can now uh, uh, create digitally and do amazing stuff with millions of pictures, which you know you can use. And if you're unsure, get in touch with me. All right. So um, I'll interpret this as uh, we are done for today. Um, best of luck with your posters. Um, use a lot of pictures, not only in the posters, but also in your presentations moving forward. Don't be like uh, many of my colleagues putting a lot of text on your slides. Work with pictures so that you can be very convincing. People will then not listening to your text, uh, right, trying to read your text at the same time. That's what we do. We, if there's text, we will read it. So that's why we want to show pictures. Um, and then they will listen to you and you will be able to convince them. So I'll stop my recording here. Uh,